Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm Lucy Gray, and we're starting our 15th webinar tonight, and we're going to be talking about conducting online research. And specifically, we're going to be talking a lot about Google tonight and how to make the most of that when you're trying to find uh, different information. And the strategies that I'm going to share should also be applicable to your students, whether they're small or older. And um, hopefully you'll, you'll get some uh, good tips um, and be able to apply this right away. So I'm going to stop sharing my video for a minute because um, I think it's distracting. And if you have any questions tonight, please put them in the chat. Um, every, all the participants are muted right now. And you can turn on your mic and ask a question if you would like to at any point as well. Uh, but from, from right now on, I'm going to get started. And if you have any questions, um, let me know. Okay. Our slides are available at bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, um, slash 2-B-E-3-B-T-V. And I actually may have put the wrong link in there. So let me double check um, and see really quickly what the correct link is and make sure that's the right one. Um, I did this uh, rather hurriedly. And I thought I had renamed the link. Well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the link in the chat so you have it directly. And then I'll make sure it's updated in the slides. So in the chat box, you'll see a link to uh, the slides. And you can join them and look at them on your own. Or you can look at them uh, in actual webinar. There are also additional resources available that you'll be able to access um, if you're interested in this topic. So make sure that you follow the next set of instructions. We have all of the materials from this webinar and other webinars in Google Classroom. And let me get back to where I was. OK, um, let me backtrack here. So here's Google Classroom, the directions for getting into Google Classroom. And you go to classroom.google.com. And you click on the plus sign there, and you enter a code. And this is the code. And you'll be able to join our Google Classroom, which has links to all the webinars. Um, all the recordings, most of them are up there. Uh, the slides, which have clickable links, and additional resources as well. If you'd like to also take the evaluation for the webinar, you're more than welcome to do that as well. And that feedback will help us plan for future events. Um, I'm going to backtrack uh, a little bit here and say um, we want to thank uh, Rio Salado and the Ed Rising program for making this possible. So there's a shout out to them. And my name is Lucy Gray. I am a former classroom teacher, technology coach, and consultant. And I teach adjunct courses every once in a while. I am also a newly minted educational technology director at a private school outside Chicago. And for the next couple of weeks, I'm your personal ed tech coach. So if you have any questions or want to know anything specifically, um, please email me, and I'd be happy to answer any direct questions. This series has been going on since, I don't know when, May, April, May. Um, and again, this is our 15th webinar, and our last one is actually next week. Uh, we'll be talking about digital citizenship and how teachers can incorporate that into uh, their classroom teaching. So make sure you join us next Wednesday for our last webinar. So today's objectives are to uh, give you a little bit of information about uh, search literacy and how that can benefit you and your students. Uh, it meets the ISTE standards uh, um, that you see here tonight. The ISTE is the International Society for Technology and Education, and they've established uh, standards for students and teachers and administrators on 
uh, implementing educational technology. So make sure you take a look at those standards uh, uh, if you'd like to know more. So my journey with search uh, started, uh, I don't know, about 10 years ago when I was working um, as a, a computer science teacher and uh, then turned into a consultant. And during that time, I became a Google certified teacher, which are now, these people are now called Google certified innovators. And I helped with a series of Google teacher academies for other Google certified teachers. And uh, at one of them, I did a presentation on search. And uh, as a result of that, Google asked me to write some search lessons for students uh, based on the work of one of their researchers named Dan Russell. And if you click on this link in, your, in the slides, you'll be taken to his blog and his website where you can read more about Dan. But Dan's a pretty accomplished uh, computer scientist in his own right. He's been at Google for a long time and he's very interested in search literacy and helping people become more effective searchers. So this is where I learned from, from looking at his work and writing lessons for Google, um, along with two other educators, that's how I became interested in search literacy and realized that it was a fundamental skill for students and teachers alike. Um, so if you wanna know more about Dan, please take a look at his work. He has a blog where he posts a search challenge every week, and they're good for teachers to hone their skills or maybe high school students. They tend to be pretty sophisticated. Um, and then he'll, he'll post the answer to them as well, so you can, you can find out if you, you did it the right way. But he also does webinars and um, that sort of thing for Google every once in a while. Sometimes he teaches some online classes. So you can find all that information on his blog. This is a search story that, um, this is an exhibit that I'm gonna show you from Google from a long time ago. And I love this because um, this particular video that I'm gonna try and find for you is about um, a woman that I know who's now a retired teacher in Maine and one of her students named Morgan on how um, Google search tools helped her teacher or helped her student become more independent. And they did these series of search stories, Google did, um, you know, a number of years ago, and I thought they were really compelling examples of why search was important. So we're gonna click on this link. What's your search story? And we should be going to a YouTube channel. And you can see search stories that have been um, produced over the years, and here's the one about Cheryl and Morgan. Oops, that's not the right one. Let me go back. Hang on. There it is. I want the one with Cheryl and Morgan. And we'll listen to that. Morgan was diagnosed with her learning disability at four years old, so that was pre-K kindergarten. When she was diagnosed, it was overwhelming, so I started researching. And everything that I found was just, you know, she'll never ride a bike, she'll never do this, she'll never do that. And it's just devastating. Many of our special ed students have grown up learning that they can't do it. They've been enabled in some cases because we just haven't had tools to allow them to be independent. My job is to give them the skills and the tools to make them independent learners. Years ago, if she had a research paper to do, they would take him to the library. She was left on her own to find books, which is too overwhelming. It's a needle in a haystack for her. Just handwriting is difficult for her. So if she can speak into something, it's not a struggle anymore. It's not a fight. Women in the Revolutionary War. Voice search just takes an inefficient search and gets rid of that and goes right to the topic that they're looking for. Then they can put a reading level in and self-select what they're able to read and understand. They've saved time, they found something that they can read, and they've been successful. They have to have that push to see the bright side of things. She'll look and say, wow, I did that. 
you know, so we don't hear I can't as much as we used to. I mean, color guard, when she came home and said she wanted to go to a color guard meeting, I immediately called up the coach and said, we need to talk because she has uh, spatial issues and we're giving her a six foot pole. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but she does it. She is an amazing girl. Um, she makes us proud every day. All of those things have really helped Morgan from being Morgan the student with a learning disability to Morgan the student with the possibilities for her future. So search can be a really powerful tool um, for people in, um, in many different ways. And uh, these stories, I think, are even though they've been, they were done, you know, eight, six, eight years ago, um, are really powerful, and you may want to look at those um, and and see how search has impacted other people. And think about your own search story. So this is a picture of my son Henry when he was in second grade, and he was sitting in front of the computer drawing, and he was drawing a Wolverine, and he didn't know what a Wolverine's ears looked like. And so he went to Google and he searched for Wolverine and he clicked on images and he looked at a picture of a Wolverine and was able to finish his drawing. And there is his picture of, um, of the Wolverine. And uh, this Wolverine, <laughs> um, um, I love looking at this and, and his drawing because it's, it showed me how savvy he was at a very young age to find the information that he needed to he needed at that time. So kids who are young, he's now Henry is now 15 and just started his sophomore year of um, high school today. But kids at a very young age can pick up on some of the concepts that I'm going to show you today. And this is our search story. Um, I also came across when I was preparing for this for a story from a teacher named Connie Weber in Michigan that I um, that I took a screenshot of many years ago on Facebook and she describes here you can read it for yourself how she used how she projected her computer to the whole class and she asked her students to find more about the tsunami that took place a number of years ago and um, I think it was Connie Weber I could be wrong anyway uh, and and she she experimented with the kids using a variety of keywords to figure out what the best search results were and you know every time they tried to kind of you know every time they searched they tried to refine their search to get to the best sites and the best sources of information this is what teachers need to do they need to model it for their students they need to think of search problems to use uh, when modeling and to, to kind of think out loud while they're searching so that kids get an idea of how they can be effective at this practice. So I just think that's important to think about as we move forward. Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. And I think it's um, a great mission and uh, very noble and everything that they do in their company revolves around this and you'll see it as we dig into some of the tools today. Um, a number of years ago at a conference I heard a woman from uh, the Cleveland Public Library talk about a new digital divide and I think this is still relevant today. Uh, there's a new di kind of digital divide in terms of thinking skills. Those who know how to think about search and those who don't. Those who know how to verify their inf information versus those who don't, those who know how to look in different kinds of places for, for, for information, for instance, YouTube, and those who understand our current kind of culture and, um, and how language affects that. Um, this woman, um, Helene Blowers, also went on to say that uh, effective searchers know how to get information to come to them rather than trying to pin it down. And the effective searchers also know that um, they know how to create and remix digital media. And they also know how to 
Um, they also understand that learning is a continuous process. It's not a fixed activity. And I think this is so applicable to education and the kinds of skills and mindsets that we're trying to develop in students. Um, so some guiding thoughts as we go through um, the following um, ideas. Search is, is what I consider the, the, the essential, fundamental 21st century skill for kids. If you can't search effectively and get information to come to you, it, it makes life a lot difficult uh, in some ways, in particularly learning in school. And the responsibility of teaching search lies uh, within the whole school community. People need to model it for students and again think out loud about how that search process works. It's not just the domain of the librarian, although the, the librarian is very, very important in the process. And I want us to think about how educators can help students to, just like Google, to organize, access, and leverage their collection of information in useful ways. How are we helping students uh, develop their own tool set? So the first place to start in educating yourself about search is at um, Google Search Education's page. This is hyperlinked in the slides. It's also listed in the resources. And in this, uh, this section of Google's educational materials, you'll find lesson plans, uh, links to recorded webinars, um, some Google a day challenges, which are kind of fun puzzles for kids to solve. They're good kind of warm up activity. And you'll find um, information about live trainings. So let's take a look at the lesson plans and activities here. This is what I created with Google with two other people um, a number of years ago. And then another librarian, I'm not a librarian, but another a librarian um, a couple years later revised these and um, updated them. So as far, as far as I know, four people have contributed to these lessons that are free and applicable to a variety of grade levels and subject matters. So um, there are three sets of lessons on picking the right search terms, uh, three lessons on understanding your search results, and three, um, three lessons on narrowing a search to get the best results, um, and then searching for evidence for a research test and evaluating the credibility of resources. I want to say the last two rows are the newest ones. I could be wrong because I don't remember doing those. Um, maybe we didn't do, that was a long time ago that we wrote these. Anyway, um, you can click on any of these and take a look at the lesson and adapt it for your set of circumstances. And um, each lesson is in a Google Doc. Ooh, that's not it. Oh, here it is. And there's a guiding lesson, an overview of the lesson. There's a survey to respond to the standards. Um, I'm not sure what standards these are. Uh, but there are different standards here that they've mapped these to. They give you the materials that you need. There's a handout. There's probably some slides to go with this. Yep, there's a, there's a slide deck in here. And then detailed information on how you can um, implement these lessons. I also think that these lessons are really good activities for teachers to do themselves. So if you're a person that um, delivers professional development to educators, you could use these as activities for um, teachers on helping them become more search literate. This particular lesson um, focused on advanced search and operators that would help you narrow your search. So there's a plethora of materials. Um, let me go back to my slides. Um, in here, oh, where'd it go? Here we are. Uh, that will help you get. Um, becomes, you, know, you can do them yourself or with your friends and colleagues, or you can use them with students and adapt them for a particular grade level that you teach. So all of these materials, again, are on Google's, um, come on, slides. Let me put it back here and I can show you. 
Nope, that's not it. There we go. So you can also um, get some power searching tips and the Google a day cha um, challenges are fun too. Uh, you can do with your students. Let me show you what those look like. So these are kind of puzzles, I would say, search puzzles um, on a variety of topics. And uh, you can show one of these to a student. I think they're in Google Slides. And you can see if students, um, what I would do is I would talk through students on how would you solve this problem? Where would you find this information? What search terms would you use? How would you narrow your search results, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a bunch of different challenges in here and it shows you also how the answer, but also how that answer was found. So these are, this is really good practice for kids. And there's, as you saw before, there's lots and lots and lots and lots of, um, I wonder if I can get back to where I was. I have to go back in the slides. Um, no, nope, that's not where I wanted to go. I was having um, so much success last week with presenting on the iPad that I thought I would do it again, but it's making it hard to go back and forth between links. And that sort of thing. Anyway, take a look at the Google search education page when you have time and, uh, and you'll find resources that will help you learn more as well as your students in terms of becoming more search literate. The next thing I'd like to do is show you some tips and tricks, and then I'm gonna take a deep dive into some of the Google tools that are out there for conducting search. So the first thing you need to know is um, Control F is really important. When you go to a web page, for instance, a Wikipedia, a Wikipedia page or a newspaper page that has a lot of text, uh, try using Control F on your device uh, to, on your computer, actually, uh, to find a keyword. You can also use this in Google Docs and other, other places that are text heavy. And I'll show you that when we break out and start looking at Google Book Search and that sort of thing. I'll show you how that works. But if you're, any kind of text that you're looking at online on a computer, if you use the keystrokes control plus F, a search box will pop up and you can search for your word and it will be highlighted. It's really, really helpful when you are um, trying to get information from a, from a text dense um, web page of some sort. So that's my first tip. Then when you're starting a search, like one of the search challenges I just showed you, um, here are some kind of things to think about. What are you looking for? And what are those some common keywords that might help you get started? How would someone else talk about it? How would an expert talk about it? What words would they use? Uh, which of these terms are most common and which of these would be really specialized, which might narrow your research? And what kind of thing are you looking for? Are you looking for a web page, a definition, a collection, a PDF maybe? Um, that will help you uh, organize your search as well. So for instance, uh, if you are looking for a presentation on butterflies, you could type in, you know, butterflies, monarch, dot PDF, and you're going to get something more specific than you would if you just typed in butterflies. So, um, so organizing your search and thinking about it ahead of time needs to be kind of strategic sometimes. And it happens more, automatic for, uh, more automatically for adults and kids have to kind of you know, be led through uh, some questions to figure out what they're actually looking for. When you're choosing keywords, uh, think about what you're trying to find, what words might appear on the page, 
uh, put yourself in the mindset of the author of these words, use synonyms for your search terms. And generally you wanna start broad in your search and then add a couple more words and, get, and narrow it down and your search choices will become um, more refined. So these are just some strategies for, for doing keyword search. Uh, you also might wanna use things that will give you specific results. For example, Missouri Population Wikipedia. Uh, you might wanna add in if you're looking for a particular source of information. Sometimes searching for an image search, and I'm gonna show you how to do that, um, may help you um, find something. Like the example I remember from this is if you search for a, a, you know, a diagram of a bicycle, you might find a picture that's labeled with the parts of the bicycle and you might find the name of a particular part you're looking for. Uh, word order matters when you're doing searches. Um, when, you're, when you're searching for common phrases, don't leave out the stop words, uh, like Little House on the Prairie is the example here. Um, use double quotes to find a particular sequence of words. So uh, if you want words that go together as a phrase, you want to enclose them in quotes. It's really, really helpful. I, I use that all the time. So what I want to do right now is, is, is um, show you some search options and, exa and, and examples. Look at Google News Search, Google Scholar, Google Books, and Google Images for information. Um, but before we do that, I want you to keep in mind that everything is searchable. Control F is your friend. Everything is changing on the web, so just keep that in mind. Um, most of the Google products have advanced search and preferences that will allow you to refine your search, and I'll show you that. Um, RSS feeds, I don't know if they're still available. I should have taken that one out. And every Google product has a team blog, including search, that tells you some of the new trends in search and that sort of thing. So before we get to q and um, I'm going to stop on my iPad and share my desktop and show you quickly how to do an effective search. So I'm going to share my screen on my desktop. And I'm going to open up a new tab to show you what to do. So, um, so this is Google's homepage. And um, you can do voice search like Morgan did. It used to look a little bit different back when that video was made. You can search by voice by clicking the microphone. And you can type in uh, words like, uh, I have to allow my revolutionary war heroes and it will conduct the search here's a summary from norwich university online eight key figures from the revolutionary war ethan allen benedict arnold elijah clark alexander hamilton paul revere crispus attucks benjamin franklin and king george the third wow i read the whole thing for me it read the first card up here which i wasn't expecting it to do so that's pretty cool so for kids who have difficulty with reading and writing, this may be an option. Um, you saw how fast that was. So um, keep in mind that Google, you know, Google Voice Search may be very useful to you in a lot of ways. Now look right underneath the search box. There are several tabs there. You can see that I got about 18 million res results. Um, there's shopping, images, videos, news, more, and then settings and tools. Let's take a look at what these, this means. Um, <clears throat> they, also, they also, now this is a fairly new feature, they also give sample questions like, what, what are the questions that people ask, typically ask about the American Revolution? And this also may help refine your results. So I'm going to click on shopping so you can just see what that is. And it shows you things that have to do with the Revolutionary War. Um, which is not really useful. There's images, and I'm gonna talk about image search in a little bit. Uh, videos, which will typically um, draw from YouTube, but other places where there are videos embedded. And news, it will, sh it will search Google News, which for this topic is not particularly re re relevant. And then under more, 
you can search maps, books, flights, finance, and personal. And I don't know what personal is. That's a new one to me. Anyway, you can search uh, these other channels for your keyword um, if you'd like to do that. I'm going to go back to all and look at the settings. So under settings, I can change languages. I can turn on safe search, which will limit some of my results. Um, I can go to advanced search, history, or I can get help with search. Um, so let's take a look at settings. So search settings, I can turn on safe search, which I already did. I can say how many search results I want per page. Um, if I want, if I use search voice, I can have the answers for voice search read out loud, or I can turn that off. Um, and I can also um, edit my search history at any time, and I can change my regional settings where I am. So that's that. Uh, under search settings, um, there's also languages. And so you can change everything to another language if you um, are inclined to doing so. They also are kind of silly, and you can turn everything into Klingon, or they had Elmer Fudd at one point too, so you could change everything into Elmer Fudd or Klingon speech, or they have some silly ones in here, but just about every language out there is represented, it seems like. So if you have English language learners, that might be helpful. And then there's a help tab here too, which will let you, um, search for your answers to, to commonly held problems. So that's under settings. Um, advanced search is really, really important. Um, every, just about every product has an advanced search feature. Um, and this way you can kind of narrow your um, search by typical Boolean uh, search query um, parameters. Um, and they give you some tips on the right hand side how to do that. So uh, if, you, if you want between a time period or uh, without certain keywords, you can do that. I typically, um, you can also say, I only want things to do with the Revolutionary War heroes that are a, you know, PowerPoint file. Um, so I can, I can narrow it and see if maybe somebody's presentation comes up. And what that does is it adds to this. I can do that through advanced search through that query box. But I can also do it manually. If I typed in file type colon PPT, which stands for PowerPoint, I can um, find, I can do it manually that way as well. So here you'll see a bunch of educational uh, files about the American Revolution. And maybe I'll find something here that's useful that is not a traditional web page. So advanced search will let you narrow your results and, and do things very specific. Um, let's say you want something that's, you know, from the past year. I do that a lot so I can get current things. Um, you know, there's some, you know, that you can narrow your results as well. So, um, so advanced search is your friend. That, that's under settings, okay? The thing that I probably use the most with a regular search is tools. And under your tools, I can sort by any time or the past year or custom range. And I can also um, search for the results. I typically look for things, you know, recently you know, because I want current stuff. Um, so that's also very useful. Also, if you look at one of these search listings, um, you'll see a pull-down menu next to the link. And sometimes there's more information in here. I'm not seeing what I wanted to show you, but sometimes they give you suggested other websites that are related, and I don't see it popping up for the search, so I don't know what I'm missing. Um, but that's how you do a basic search. Now, let's talk about image searches. So you can click on here and go to images, and it will show you your topic, um, or you can type in images.google.com and go there. So I'm going to type in, um, you know, tulips, uh, flowers. Let's try that. And um, to give you a good example of what this looks like. So lots of pictures of tulips pop up and I could actually you know, click on one of these sponsored ones and buy some, which I'm not going to do. 
But what I love about Google image search is that I can sort by color or all sorts of different search parameters here. So if I want pink tulips, I can click on the keyword pink and all of these images will be a pink tulips. The other thing that you can do too is under um, tools, this is, this is specific to Google image search. I can search by size, by color, by usage rights, if, you know, which is important if you're teaching kids to use not, you know, images that are not copyrighted. You can tell them to, um, you know, look for images that have been labeled for reuse. Like these pictures have Creative Commons licenses on them, so you can use them without, in, in, as long as you give attribution to, to where you found those photos. You can search for clip art. I don't think there's any other oh, some clip art. Um, line drawings, which is useful if you want to diagram one of these, I guess. Uh, animated photos, things like that. And also within a time frame. And then there's some more, you can see the sizes of these. So it tells you how big that file will be, or um, the dimensions in pixels. So that's kind of cool, isn't it? Um, so if you're looking for an image, um, Google Image Search will help you big time. The next um, thing I wanted to show you was Google Book Search. And this is, um, I don't know how many people are really using this uh, in general. It's books.google.com. And you can search for a title of a book like, um, Click Clack Moo is one of my favorite uh, books that my kids read when they were little. So uh, you'll see a list of books that have um, Click Clack Moo or related to the title. You can see that there are a bunch of them um, with uh, this theme. And you can click on that. And here's the title and it gives you a preview of the book so you can kind of get an idea of where it is and you can buy the ebook right then and there from here um, you can find it in your you can put it in, you can organize it into your own library which I'm going to show you in a minute I'm going to uh, put it in my favorites hopefully and let me go back to the book um, you know, you know, so there's, there, there's some information that's provided here. You can add it to your library here. You can um, write a review of it. You can link to it. You can actually embed it on a website. So if you wanted to have your favorite books on a web page for your students or something, um, you could do that. You can make a kind of a book list. So sometimes, you know, sometimes books are not copyrighted, so you might be able to see more than just a preview here. Um, note that there's an advanced book search here too. So you, this is, this is, hasn't been updated in a while, I can tell, because the logo is old. Um, but if you're looking for things by a particular author or keywords in the title or whatever, um, you can find stuff in here. And advanced search is, Book search is, it looks different than advanced search for regular Google search. So that's what that looks like. Um, I think Google was, was planning on, you know, scanning most books and putting them up on the internet, but not making it widely, you know, not every page available kind of thing. I think it ran into some issues a while ago. Um, I'm not sure what happened with legal stuff per pertaining to it. So look at this here too. I have an extension in my Chrome browser called library extension. You probably won't see something like this, um, but it tells you if this is available in your local library. Um, you may have that in the search if you do it, I'm not sure. About this book, we'll give you more information about the book. Um, I used to be able to find it uh, stuff in here in my local library without this extension and I don't know 
I want to say I had to go into one of these citations to do that. I can't remember how I did it. Um, but anyway, uh, this is this gives you a lot of information about the book um, and that sort of thing. Now you can, as I said before, you can add it to your library. And let me show you what that looks like. So um, when you go to books.google.com. you'll see under the search that it says my library and you click on my library and it takes you to a place where you can save your favorites. And I believe this is public. I could be wrong. Um, if somebody had the link, they could see this, but I think they have to have the actual link. You can see some of the, some of my book lists here are private. Some of them are public. So it looks like you can, um, you can, designate which lists that you've created are um, are public or private. So, um, you know, sometimes they say, I don't know if I must have, I must have organized these at some point. Um, and you can scroll through, like I, I, like I think my, when I used to use this more often, I would use it as a way of kind of keeping track of books that I thought were interesting. Or books that um, I think um, I think I had this brilliant idea at one point of taking like my favorite books and embedding them on a website at some point. I know I kept a big list of education books that people were reading on here too. And I'm just wondering where I put it. I think it might have been under education. Um, I haven't thought about this in a long time and, and I don't really know if anybody's using this. Um, in general, but I think it could be potentially really, really, really useful. Maybe it was essential books. I had a huge list of kind of like, you know, recommended ed ed education books. And I think maybe it's essential books is the list. And so here's my list. It's public. And I believe I can give people the link to it so that they can look at it if they were interested in it. So, you know, maybe for a syllabus or something, you'd want to put a book list in there. Um, that might, might work. Notice that there is a, a, you can search library here. If you're looking for a particular person or author and search the books that you have listed. So I don't know if people are using this that much, but I just wanted to show it to you because people don't know about it. The next related search I want to show you is Google Scholar, and I use this quite a bit. Um, again, I think it hasn't been updated by Google in a while in terms of its design. It's looking, maybe it's looking a little bit more updated now. Uh, but you can search for scholarly articles here and case law, and you can follow, um, you know, the you know, professors who publish and, and do all sorts of kind of cool things. So, um, the first thing I'm going to type in is, um, I'm going to type in a professor from Harvard, Chris D.D. Harvard. And um, you can see all of the work, PDFs and books and so on and so forth, um, articles that he has, uh, that he has um, written. Um, and you can also create an alert. So anything that's newly published by him, you'll get an email alert. You can search within a custom range. Uh, they have user profiles, so you can go to this profile here <coughs> and see everything he's done, which I think is pretty cool. And you can follow him. So if you want new articles um, related to him, you can get email alerts uh, letting you know when new material has come up. It also will tell you how many people have cited it in the year it was published. And the, and the reason why um, how many people have cited it is important is that it tells you that it's a, a you know a respected article that people have used in in their scholarly work and um, it might be particularly <laughs> useful to whatever research project you're working on so um, this one looks like it's probably the one that <laughs> has gotten the most attention and it might, might be worth reading so I think this is kind of cool. The other thing is when I'm using Google Scholar, 
and I'm logged in to the library at National Lewis University where I'm an adjunct, it automatically, through the network somehow, knows I'm at National Lewis and shows me what's available in my local library <laughs> or in my National Lewis library. Really, really, really useful. Um, you can click on the star to, to save it to your library. You can see who cited it, related articles, different versions of it. <coughs> Lots of information is provided here. There is also advanced search in here. And I'm trying to think where to go to get it. I don't see it available right now. <coughs> there usually is a triangle up here in the search box that will give you advanced search features. Let me look at Google Scholar. Um, Here, on the left-hand side, this is new, advanced search. So I can look for anything by Randy Yarrick, who is another academic that I know, or I know what I was gonna show you. I want things that are published in uh, learning and, oh, let me think of a journal. Um, learning and leading with technology, I think is, the, is, is these. Let's see if it's in here. It's, it's been a while. Yep, okay. So here are all articles that have been published in Learning and Leading with Technology, I think. Um, and notice how it changes the search terms up here. It, it, it shows source, colon, learning, source, colon, and it takes all, it takes all the keywords in. This is what the actual um, search terms look like when you, they're written out. So you can search by um, by keywords, by, you know, somebody that's authored something, and um, by date. I, f I use this probably the most when I'm writing papers in general, okay? So not everything that you'll see on here is free. Some of these things are on JSTOR or other databases, and unless you're, you know, you're in a library that has a subscription to that database, you may not be able to access it. So just be aware that some of the stuff may not be readily available. Um, but it, it's a start, okay? Uh, it shouldn't be the be-all and end-all of your research, but it's one place to do that. Uh, now, I want to make sure that I, I did, oh, I haven't done news yet. And this has changed the most recently, news.google.com. And I don't, um, I'm not sure if I like the new redesign, but you can find um, information here uh, that might, um, you know, if you're looking for something that's current, uh, you know, current event type of thing. So if you type in, um, you know, back to school, Uh, it's going to show you articles from around the country or the world around back to school time. So, um, you know, this is how you can find some articles. I'm just giving you kind of a, 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 a very, 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 very superficial topic right now. Um, not superficial, but just not, um, it's not really news. Uh, anyway, so you have this. Um, They'll give you top stories, you know, that's popular on the internet. Based on your search results in Google News, they'll give you topics that are of interest to you. You can also, um, there also, there used to be ways that you could refine what the news sources were as in, in general. Under favorites, you can find saved searches, saved stories, topics that might be of interest to you, um, the sources of information that you're pulling from, so if you're concerned about that, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> and then you can, you can narrow, um, you can look through current stuff according to categories. Now, there's also um, settings for this. And there's not much you can do there, it looks like. Now, there used to be advanced search uh, topics for this as well, and I don't see it anymore. Um, it, this has changed radically, and you know, I don't know how great it is. You could probably type in, um, 
you know, education and New York, New York Times and see what happens if you're looking for something that's specific to a news source. And you can save this result to come back to if you ever want to. And then they show you related topics that may be useful to you. We used to, this used to do so many other things that was, it used to be so cool. Um, one of the things it did, it would show you when a topic um, started trending. There used to be graphs associated with searches and you could see when a topic was becoming popular and that sort of thing, it was pretty cool. But they've updated this, you know, for better or for worse, and that's what it looks like. So that's Google News um, search. So I've, so I've showed you what a regular search looks like. I showed you what Google Books look like, Images, Scholar, and News. And I bet you you didn't know half of that before um, this webinar. The other thing I want to show you too is um, Google search operators. Let me see if I can find a good list of these. So the search operators. Um, <laughs> um, so these are search operators that will help you um, help you refine a search. So um, let me show you how some of these work. So one of them is one of, them, one of my favorite ones is um, you can I can search right up here in my Chrome search bar, or I can search here. Uh, one of my favorite ones is define. Um, Define, and I don't even know if you have to put in a colon anymore. Define teacher, and then it's going to bring up this card and tell you what it is. And it teacher. Actually give you the pronunciation. And you can click on this and see, you know, uh, you can translate it. Um, you can see uh, mentions over time. It's pretty cool. So that's there. You can also type in... Um, you know, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I think it's put down here. And then put in a um, asterisk and it will tell and that will give you pull up searches that tell you when he did that. Or um, Abraham Lincoln was born in asterisk and it will give you some information that will be able that will let you ascertain when that was that is called a lucky card I believe so these things you can you can play around with um, and they'll do things for you I also do what else do I do I also do this one often weather 6062 is another one or movies 6093 oops I didn't mistype that and it will show you movies near you and you can scroll through here and all genre you can sort by genre it's kind of cool so um so there are some in our Google Classroom there are some I don't know if I put a list of search operators in there but in Google, and let me go back into our classroom and show you. In our resources tonight, um, you should find some information that will give you more tips and tricks around Google search operators. Uh, remember, you need to go to classroom.google.com, click on the plus sign, and you will see our slides plus these um, resources here that may be helpful to you. On Dan Russell's homepage, you'll see that he has some um, tip sheets here for all of Google's advanced operators and advanced skills. So let's look at this. And he's, I mean, he would know he's the, he's the guru um, of search at Google. So these are all things that will help you figure out, um, you know, how to search a little bit more um, sophisticatedly. You can also, just by FYI, you can search for, for tracking packages, for 
the flight numbers, um, all sorts of cool things. And I, there used to be a page that had more, this one seems to be, um, maybe there's a different name. It's not just search operators, Google search tips and tricks. Let's see what comes up. List. Google used to have a list that did all this stuff. Um, I want like a big list. Well, let's look at this one. There was one that was, there's, I know, anyway, there's, oh, I know, here's another one that I remember. You can do conversions. So if you type in, um, I'm getting a spinning beach ball right now. Come on, let me click Chrome. I don't want to click Chrome because then I will stop the webinar. Anyway, if you type in, you know, 10 US dollars in pesos, it will give you the conversion. And you can do that with all sorts of metrics speed too. I'm gonna stop sharing because that's spinning. And we're now at 10 o'clock, so it's time for us to end. I'm going to start sharing my iPad again. Just to wrap up here. And Angela, if you have any questions, you can grab the mic right now, or you can type them in. Um, the chat and I'd be happy to answer them for you if you're there and um, here is our Google Classroom code if you want to go to classroom.google.com and click on join and the plus sign you will uh, be able to enter this code and get all the resources that we've accrued over the last few months it's a lot of material and um, the slides will be here as well. So what's next? Next week is our last one. And it's, um, oh, you're, you are, Angela, thank you. Um, and then our next week, we're gonna talk about digital citizenship and how we can foster that in our classrooms. So let's try, let's look at what you brought up, trends. Um, I know that they've, they've published every year, they publish stuff like this, um, but the news has specific one that it used to be, it was designed completely differently a while ago. And I want to say in the last year or so, they, they've, they've launched um, the new version of Google News. Maybe it's been longer than that. Um, anyway, you're right. Um, this is fascinating, Angela. And what's cool, I think that's interesting to show kids these examples as well because you can say what is it like this is kind of interesting American football uh, I wonder what the blue football is is that soccer that's interesting so you can search and I, I think you could ask a lot of questions of your kids by comparing different Things. Uh, like here's a comparison between Taylor Swift and Kim Kardashian. I don't know how educational that is. Um, Fortnite. What kind of noodles do you like? Cupcake. Um, and then they have, oh, here's a back to school one. This is cool. So we can look at um, The biggest search queries. I think there's some math problems out of this, I bet. Hairstyles for school, uniforms for school. Yeah, everybody's searching for NYU medical school tuition because it's now free. <laughs> That's interesting. When is the first day of school? Look at your school calendar, people. That's really, really cool. I love that. You can also um, 
share that out, by the way. Click on the share button and then you can email it to somebody. Um, if you're on a computer, you might even be able to save it to share it to Google Classroom somehow. So that's pretty cool. Thank you, Angela, for sharing that. Um, so that's Google Trends. You can find it at Google uh, trends.google.com. There is also a, um, a Google search blog out there too that has kind of the latest search stories and things like that in there and I put it in the resources for tonight as well. So that's all I have for tonight. I know this the title of our webinar tonight was a little misleading. We weren't talking about research in general. We were really talking about research and using Google. Um, but hopefully this is giving you some food for thought in terms of how do you help your students develop a research stance? How do you help them become more critical thinkers using the tools, resources, and settings within Google? Um, and I hope that you'll, you'll go dig into the material that um, Daniel Russell has put together because uh, he really is has spent a lot of time thinking about this and teaching it to um, uh, adults all over the place. And uh, I think that there's certainly an art to searching, um, but I think a lot of these skills can also be explicitly taught to students and teachers alike. So I hope you found this useful tonight. Next week, um, again, will be digital citizenship, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, everybody come out for our final webinar um, of the season. So thanks for coming, Angela. I appreciate your, your attendance. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Have a great night.